everyone. Uh, so today we're finally going to do a uh, hydroponic update. I uh, just wanted to show you this is November 19th and uh, we have a lot of snow for the month of November. But uh, that's okay because we'll go into the lettuce house and it's nice and warm in there. Let's go see what Wayne's up to. Let's go back and see what he's up to. Oh. What you doing? Well, I'm just making some changes. We have way too many troughs with clearing holes in it. We don't need them. So I'm drilling holes and we're going to make new nursery troughs. So you have way too many troughs with? Just 30 holes in the trough. Oh, okay. So we've added, I put a hole in between each one just to give us some more nursery troughs. Oh, cool. And, uh, I don't know what they grew in those, but uh, we don't use them. So. Uh, in the 30 hole yeah. troughs? Yeah. We use 60s and 16s. And, but anyways, uh, Patty's getting inundated with questions and comments, so we thought we'd better do an update on our hydroponic system because we have made quite a few changes in the last year. It's been a while since we've done a video. Eh? Yeah, well, Wayne's on the phone pretty much every day from people all over the world calling. Yeah. So we're getting calls from Europe and... and Egypt, Israel, Canada, and lots out of the U.S. Yeah. Uh, and thanks, guys, for... Yeah. Oh, yeah, we might, we don't mind at all. And when we show you stuff, it's what we do. It doesn't necessarily that works everywhere, but we're more than happy to help. We had a, a fellow grower here yesterday for two or three hours, and uh, we went through the whole process with him, and then that's why we thought, because he's having some problems, so we thought this is, would be a good opportunity while it's still fresh in our, in our mind what we went through yesterday to... Uh, show you guys the changes we've made and uh, how to grow in the winter, how to adapt to this winter. As you know, we're in northern Ontario and we we're expecting minus 20 this week. No sunshine, you can see the snow. It, uh, it yeah, I just showed them out it there. It slows, slows everything right down. So uh, I think we'll go up to the front and show you some of the things we were showing Steve yesterday. Okay, and we have um, a few questions that I have written down that others have asked. So let's okay. go. Okay, and uh, I also hope that we answer as many questions as possible. If we haven't um, responded to your comment, it, we, we have read it. We've read every single comment that is, uh, is written, but uh, sometimes we just don't have the time to answer right away, so we thought this would be a good idea to, a good chance to get back to all these questions that you had. So hopefully we answer everything. If not, Comment below and then we'll try to get caught up now. Yeah, so like I said, Steve was here yesterday and one of the issues he's having was germination. And like I told him, we had the same issue when we first started. We had really inconsistent germination. And it just shows you when you go through the greenhouse how important it is because the better the plant is here, the better the plant is here, the better it is out in, in the greenhouse. So I'm going to show you a couple little things that we do. There's some seedlings that germinated that uh, I will be actually transferring these today down into the bottom section after I've done some transplanting. So this is where they go on top of the heat mat. This is where they go for the first few days. Yeah. So there's the heat mat here. It's at 68 degrees. We only use this in the, in the winter time. We don't bother with it in the summer. But you can see this. I seeded these. Uh, today is Monday. I seeded these on Friday. So you can see That's the germination. Is, great germination. Is, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and what is that, then? This is lettuce. Different, two different varieties of lettuce. This Rex and your. Uh, when we do plant it, plant it. We soak the oasis down. We use oasis here. We find it very nice to work. With. Yeah. It's a one-inch cube, pre-cut. Very simple to work with. We basically just soak down the soak it down before we seed, and then I'll drain the water. Actually, drain the water back off. And then I'll seed every one. And then I'll add a liter of water with a cap of root conditioner. Now the root conditioner, I mean, it's just something we do. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to use it. It's right here. It's just a, it's an organic product. I just use a cap full in a, in a liter of water or a quart of water. And that's basically the only time we ever add this to it. And then pour that liter yeah. or quart over top of that. And there the are entire different tray. varieties, so whatever one you can find in your area. We happen to use one from Organic, but we've used different ones over, over the last four years. So. You think it helped the development of the roots? 
and, I, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, we'll pull some trays out. So when they get to this, it's three or four days. Like I said, I don't leave them in these trays any longer than I have. The sooner I can get them out, the better. There's no air, no oxygen down there. There's the saturated water. You know that's not good for the roots. And that's when you get the in inconsistent germination. So the great big long stuff, bushy stuff, leggy stuff, stuff that doesn't germinate at all. You can see the difference. Some of the trays that we had for years back to now. So when we get down to this system that we built about three years ago, it just uh, you can come around here and you can see it's just in a little little tote that I got from Home Depot, and there's just a $25 aquarium pump in there, and this has been running for four years. This pump now it runs three times a day for 15 minutes, and I'll pull a couple of these trays out so you can see the development in, a, in about 11 to 14 days. Wow. You just see the germination is just phenomenal. You know, 100% pretty much. Uh, this is some parsley. This is a new crop, which I'm going to talk about when we get farther down the greenhouse. And then, of course, our different lettuces. We only grow four or five different types of lettuce. This is our Rex, our Austin, our Bib lettuce. This is Tropicana, green, dark green leaf lettuce. Uh, this is a Salanova Red Boston, and this is a Red Oak Leaf. The Oak Leaf is really pretty, yeah, I like I'll that. be transplanting these later today into the nursery. I so just wanted you guys to see these. Here's another one. But, uh, again, the germination is phenomenal. That is beautiful. And, no, this is Muir, which in the summertime is our pop most popular lettuce. Grows the best, beautiful heads, or for the mix. Health-wise and quality, it, 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 it's phenomenal. The winter time, well, it's we still grow it, but it does slow down. It's not one of our top varieties in the winter. Uh, the demand is still there for it, but it doesn't quite give us the same size of head that we want. So we do plant a few other different varieties. What I was going to say to you about the, the rooting, I could probably show you. <coughs> Because I am going to plant. This is how easy this is to work. Okay, let with. me go to the other side. This is how easy this is to work with. It just pulls apart. But you can see the roots coming beautiful. through. Beautiful. And parsley's fairly slow crop to get going, but once it does take off, it's beautiful. Similar to cilantro. Yeah. Well, a little slower than that. If I were to pull that cilantro right now, the bottom would be pure white. Okay. And you put multiples in each hole with the yeah. uh, parsley we'll as well, get into right? That. Yeah. We'll get into that farther down some of the experimenting we're doing. So I'll put this back. So since we invested in these troughs, it, these trays, it, it was phenomenal. The difference in our germination, our success rate, and the quality of the, the, the plant going into the nursery. So do you put them back in? Yeah, I the will. In? I will after the pump shut off right now. Okay. So we'll go through all this as we go through the system, but I want to, why we're here, I want to show this. We get a lot of questions about the piping and the pump that we use. So our main line is a two inch line, and it, it's, there's a, uh, a, every 10 feet, we have a valve teed off. You can see down. here, right here, so we can actually control the flow every 10 feet. You can see the water flowing out here, and I can, I can increase it when I want to flush them out, or I can turn it down to when I just want the, basically we, we get a, a quart or liter a minute going through our lines. That's, uh, that's all it is, it just runs 24-7. Our, our trays are sloped on a three inch slope. Our pump is a one horse pump. And I mean, you can, depend on the size of your system, we have about 400 trays in here. Oh. So we're needing about 90, you know, 90 to 95 liters a minute. So this is a one horse pump. And this is just a swimming pool pump. An indoor, in ground swimming pool pump you can buy online for about $450. It's been running for four years without an issue. You know, so uh, I mean there's some pretty expensive pumps out there but this is doing the job. It has a filter and a basket right in, in, in the pump. I'd say we've had no issues with it at all. 
we do have a tee off in our main line which we're we're blowing excess water and we what we did we, we capped it we drilled a bunch of holes so we actually have a nozzle and I don't know if you can see down in there they're bubbling away so we're actually putting oxygen back into our reservoir to help with the plant growth. I think they can see that. So we did want to talk a little bit about winter growing and changing varieties in the winter time versus summer. We've noticed over the last couple of years which, which, which grow better and because we're always looking for weight, we sell most of our lettuces and, and our, our uh, herbs and greens by the pound or half pound. Uh, so we're always looking for the best growth we can. And in the winter when there's lack of light and no lights in this greenhouse, the growth really slows down. Well, and it started about two weeks ago, it really dropped. And it won't pick up again now till the end of January. So we have eight to 10 weeks where there's a really slow growing time. So uh, we have changed a few varieties around, added a few, and we found the last two winners you can see here. Very beautiful head of lettuce. These, the Boston, which is, this is the Rex we get from Johnny's. Consistent, healthy, you still get a nice head of lettuce even in the winter short growing period. So, I mean, this is one we've upped the numbers in in this greenhouse, because we can still sell it as a head of lettuce, but most of the others are just primary mixes in that side. And you can see the red Boston as well. It, can, it, it gets to be quite a nice size too. That we can, you can see the Boston lettuces really do well in the, in the shorter daylight. So, we've upped the numbers on that. In the nursery tray, I mentioned to you that we have started a couple new crops and we've taken a few out because we found some that don't produce as well and because we do this for a living, we, we had to eliminate a couple crops and it was just for ourselves, we keep growing them, just like kale for instance, we do not grow kale in here anymore in the winter time, we will grow in the summertime, but it just doesn't produce enough and what we have replaced it with down here and this is something, I watch all the same videos you guys do, and I never once heard it mentioned. But we just stumbled on it, we wanted to try it. These are beet tops. They actually don't make a beet, we, we just grow them to the tops. And you can see we have quite a patch here. Every week, we did some experimenting to see how it would go. And we looked at three things when we, we look at three things when we do experiment. First is the quality of the product. You know, you want a good product for yourself, or your family, or to sell. And the second is is the weight. Are we getting enough weight off each trough to make it worthwhile? And thirdly is the turnaround time on the crop. Because some of these crops are multiple cuts. This particular crop of beet tops, and this this variety is fresh pack and fresh start. There's two varieties here. On a trough, we, we will cut about five and a half pounds of, per trough. Per trough, every three weeks. So that's a lot. That to me, that's eleven bags, half pound bags of beet tops off the trough. When we had the same amount of kale over on this side of the greenhouse, we were lucky if we got a bag and a half to two bags in a three-week turnaround period. So when you do the dollars and cents, it just didn't make sense. Think about, you wonder if this will sell? Well, you can see, we don't have enough. You know, we can go to the farmer's market, we'll take about 40 bags of beet tops on a Saturday morning and they're all gone. You know, so that just... And they're you know, they're so delicious. They're yeah. so delicious. The nutrients, you can see the quality, the people just love them. Unlike beet tops that you would cut off the beets in your garden, these are so tender, like you add them to your salad and it's just amazing. And they're clean, you can just see, you can see that. Got a mark on them. Beautiful. So basically, I tr we harvest four four troughs a week for the market. We do a few other troughs for some of the restaurants and the one grocery store that we go with. And and they'll come back in about three weeks. You can see here the different stages. We'll be harvesting these this week. Well, those were cut last week. And look how fast the turnaround is. And this is a poor time of year. And the big thing of this is we get five to seven cuts per trough. So if you figure that out, you know, you're selling $55 almost per trough every week off of them. 
off a crop and off a cutting. You know, you save a lot of time with the repeat crops that you cut and grow back again. We have a couple in here that are like that. And, uh, so this is one crop we've added, and then I said, try it out for yourself and see how it goes. And if you, you know, it's a phenomenal crop for yourself, but the, the sales, you know, we just can't keep up. And it's replaced kale quite nicely because we know kale is very popular, but it just economically didn't suit what we were doing in the, in the winter time. So we'll take a further walk back here. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a crop we've been doing since day one is cilantro. And you see I keep these in a nursery trough right from start to finish. We put two blocks per put two seeds per block and two blocks per hole. Now you saw me dr drilling holes at the start. They're actually a little bigger to help fit these two blocks in. But again, here's another crop. So when we bunch these up, we get 20 bunches per tray. Yeah, and these ones we don't cut. We, yeah, we sell is, them as living. Yeah. Our living. How, many, how many, sorry, hun? We get 20 bunches out of a tray. Per, per, per tray. tray. Nice. You know, it takes about five, five to six weeks. But once your rotation starts, it's great. There's some all the time. And we can never grow enough. You know, the, the, the demand for it is phenomenal. The shelf life on all this product is phenomenal. We do have one more leaf crop. Here's the tropicana. Again, this is another good crop for the winter time. It doesn't seem to slow. It doesn't get as heavy, but you can see the the size is there. It doesn't seem to slow down like other crops do. Either. And the crunch. Oh, it's it's it's, it's beautiful nice. lettuce. Come further back here. You can see. Look in this section here how the the Boston just stands out. You know size wise higher as the, the other crops. So we are really going to up the numbers on this because we know we can sell this every week, week in and week out. It's a great product to have. Here's another one. When I get back to the what I told you earlier about uh, quality, regrowth, we're doing some experimenting. We've had some issues with our arugula this summer. I think it was because of the heat. It shouldn't be affecting it now, but we do notice quality on our second and third cuts has dropped quite a bit. We, so we've done some experiment. You can see this arugula here. It looks great. Again, we have two blocks per hole. Eight, eight to ten seeds per, hole, per block. And these are also in the nursery troughs. Yeah. We get two to, three, two to three cuts of these. The problem we have, we find that it gets a little leggy. You can see here, still tender, phenomenal taste. So what we're doing now, we've run in some experiments with only one block Per hole. One block per hole. And we're going to see what happens. So the only difference here would, would really be the weight and possibly the quality on the regrowth. And how many seeds per block? Sorry? Six to ten. Six to eight. ten. I got pretty big fingers, so whatever I can drop in that hole. Yeah, he's not too neat at yeah, it. <laughs> but it all works out. You can see we grow a lot of arugula. Again, that's another crop we don't have enough of. But, uh, people, and Swiss everybody chart. wants it. Everybody wants it. Here is really the, the star of the whole greenhouse. Yeah, lettuce is number one, but uh, Swiss chard, it's a phenomenal crop. You can see by the size of some of these plants how many cuttings we've already taken. This stuff is coming near its end. I've got some new stuff started in the nursery. What I try to do is replace five or six trays every couple of weeks so that I've always got some good growth and the new stuff coming along. But this, from here down, we can't keep it, you know, we can take a hundred bunches a week uh, to the market and to some of our customers and we just love it. The restaurants love it. It's, uh, it's becoming quite a... Uh, it took a little while though, didn't it, for people yeah. to catch on because they're used to the grocery store Swiss yeah. chard or the garden Swiss and chard. Really for, for the restaurants it took time. Mm -hmm. Not so much for the market, people were buying it. But now we have restaurants that will order a tote at a time, which is you know, anywhere from five to seven pounds of Swiss chard. We've added it to the menu, but look at the color. Right? It just stands out on the plate. It, you know, in this day and age, you're coming up with all kinds of recipes and things. And, the, and this know, is the bright lights. Yeah, this is the bright lights. It's phenomenal. Beautiful stuff. It's a great Well, product. it's very attractive. So I have one other one I wanted to show you. I already showed you the parsley. We've decided to do a lot more herbs. Uh, people want the herbs you see in the little packages in the grocery store. They are quite expensive. 
so we got to give them a nice big bunch for a reasonable price and it's phenomenal so we have we've started some dill which isn't up yet i just planted this week but i do have the parsley and i showed you the parsley in the starting tray and i just want to show you almost the finished product so here we have almost the finished product of parsley we have a couple of trays here and this is a crop that we've only started about six weeks ago growing we hadn't grown any in the last four years just to try it and this is something that's caught on right away almost every chef i deal with every restaurant is already ordered a dozen bunches a week at the grocery store the flavor is phenomenal the shelf life and consistent the crop is always consistent you can see we have different stagings around of it around the greenhouse uh, we have some more up here in the nursery Don't. <laughs> this is all cilantro. Is that cilantro? Yeah. Is that? But anyways, we have different stages around the greenhouse. And I mean, it's just like that. Experiment again. We have two blocks. We've got a half a dozen seeds in a block. And you have to experiment. In the nursery the, trays again. Yeah. The potential is, is, is unreal. And then this, again, this is the slowest time of year for growing. And it, and it looks great. By the end of the week, it'll be another inch or so taller. And it'll be suitable to start selling. And now that we have enough in here, I will have it every week. People can know when they come to the market or my chef's order that I have the product. And that's all it is, just scheduling and getting everything down so you get a proper rotation. And go from there. So one of the biggest problems we have is short days up here. It's dark now by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, so what we have done this week, we actually, or last week, we brought in a lighting engineer. So we have, he's uh, working on it now. He's uh, telling me that I can get the same or better growth in the winter time by adding some LED lighting to the greenhouse. So we're just waiting back for some, some quotes and estimates and uh, we'll see from there. And then, uh, we'll see what happens when we get those installed. We will uh, do another short video and show you uh, how it's helped us. I yeah. so hope you enjoyed that and if you have any questions, uh, don't be afraid to there's a couple more questions I have written down, but I want to show them the bok choy as well. This is another amazing seller. This is tiny right now, but uh, when it's yeah, when it's full size, it's absolutely gorgeous. So let's go to the front, and you can answer more questions. Okay, someone had asked um, what you do for the algae that builds up in the. They, they want to know whether you use an algae side or no, what do you do? Actually, we just every time we harvest. We wash them. You can see here. There's very little in here. This is stained. It's not. It's. Uh, they do. We do get a little bit. This time of year, not as bad. Um, but we wash these troughs out every time we harvest. We've got a, a long pole with a brush on the end. We, we take a mild bleach solution. And we, we, wa we wash it all down with the rag. We run the brush through with the rag on it again, and then we rinse it off. And that's basically all we do. We don't really get. The sunshine basically does that, yeah, eh? The light. Yeah. The light. Okay, and another... The collector trough oh. that does build up, but we do we, we clean that every two or three months, wash it right down, so it's never been a real issue. Yeah. Um, another question was, um, how do you cut the roots on the plant when you harvest? Do you want to show them that? Okay, so he'll show you how we cut the roots to go to uh, market. So this one isn't quite ready yet. The root. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Look at the length of that. Yeah. Well, this time of year you get a lot more root than you do in the summertime. But yeah, nice and white, nice healthy roots. No, no, no burn on them. You know. So well, it's pretty simple. We, we rinse them off with the hose. I can show you. Yeah, let's go over to the bucket. Just in this place we take, we wash them down. Clean everything off. The root, not the whole. No, no, the root. And here, now you can really see how nice it is. Isn't that there. beautiful? Yeah. Basically, I just I leave an inch on. Oh wait, on. I can't see. I just trim them. I leave an inch on because a lot of the restaurants we deal with and the grocery store, we actually ship it in these blue totes. You know, you know so that they're all reusable. And we'll put six to eight heads of lettuce in a tote, and we'll just put a little bit of water on the bottom. When I go back the following week, if they have any left, which isn't very often, but the restaurant sometimes, it looks like the day I brought it in. Yeah. You know, they last. They're in their cooler and they got a bit of water, and 
I've, I've had them tell me two or three weeks they've had this same head well, on Well, even some of our customers at the market or the ones that come here, they'll just put that into a little tiny glass of water and keep topping the water up, like not past the root. Yeah. And that'll just continue to live and grow. So it's, we'll cut uh, it right off. You leave a little bit yeah. on and we just ship it like that. And it looks nice too. Yeah. So I think that's it. That was, uh, well, I'm hoping. Well, yeah. It's the way we do it. doesn't always mean that for yeah okay and one more quick thing is people ask how we get our water how we top up our tanks so you can explain how we do this okay, basically our... you know we have a reservoir tank which we is there actually change that tank once a month to pump it out but daily we have to top it up because the plants are using nutrients uh, they're, they're evaporation run, run this, yeah the evaporation and, and well, leak is, you know, it's a leak here and there, but basically the plants are using up the water and the nutrients. So what we do daily, in the wintertime, we roughly add a barrel a day to our tank. And you can see I've got a, the water here, the nutrients in already. I pre-mix it every, the night before, just because I want it, the so water's cold coming out of the well. So I give it a chance to warm up to room temperature. And basically I just have a little salt pump that I put in here. Oh, and, it, and it's fed around into, into my main line, my return line. And then it's run underground. And, uh, yeah, into the tank. Over here and into the tank. This is terrible camera work, by the way. So I just plug it in. It, you know, just like I said, a barrel once a day this time of year. In the summertime, we probably go through four barrels. Yeah, up, well, basically up to Basically, that's four. all we do. And I can actually unplug it, walk away, and the pump just siphons it down. So we, this time of year, actually, our EC is, is up. We're running it around 2, anywhere from 1.8 to 2.2 two in the wintertime, down to 1.2 in the summertime. You know, just to get a little more nutrients because of the lack of sun and get some extra growth in there. So, again, any questions, you don't just shoot that in. That's or it. call Wayne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll help you out. Yeah. Okay, thank All you. All right, thanks. Okay, we're going to say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Is that fun? Yeah.